everyone from Guangzhou. I have finally made it here. I've wanted to come visit for so long and I'm starving. So we are starting off hitting the ground running and we are at the Songjiang Market, the 1913 market. This was a market that opened in 1913 and it was where everybody would do their shopping. And it recently, within the past like five years, got revamped to focus on that history since people aren't really shopping at markets anymore, just like for grocery store kind of things. Um, now it's filled with a lot of traditional shops and some new just specialty shops. So there's a lot of food. I'm very hungry. We have to go eat. So I don't know where to start. It all smells really good. Let's just go. <laughs> So I had my kenanbap for lunch, but there I'm bleeding by the way, and I don't know why. Um, I am now going to go to a place that I'm really excited about. It is called Gang Sonyan, and um, it has yanggang, which I feel like I mention a lot for the amount of times that I eat it, um, but it's basically just this traditional Korean sweet that I love, and Kurt makes fun of me because apparently only old women eat it, but old women are wise, which is what he doesn't understand. So clearly I've got taste. So yeah, we're going to go in there and they have all kinds of young gang. So we'll see what happens. I don't know how much I'm going to eat. So let's go. first. This one is kiwi. Not gonna lie, it's a little strange. It just tastes like kiwi if you sucked out like 90% of the flavor, but it's refreshing at the same time. I'm gonna continue my fruit and I'm gonna try the yuzu. Oh, this one did not take out any of the flavor. Where the kiwi was a little flavorless, this is like, I feel like I just took a bite out of yuzu, which is good for some. I was just a little shocking, but this is really nice. It's cold, it's, oh, it's good. And last but not least, one of my favorite flavors of all time, black sesame. This one can't let me down. Oh. Okay, number one, black sesame, number two, yuzu. This is so good. Excellent, I should have just bought three of those. So I'm very happy with my snack. <laughs> Okay, I was thinking about getting a croquette, croquet, um, but I'm honestly very satisfied and very full. So we're gonna head to the complete opposite side of Guangzhou and go to a little cafe where I can rest, put my bag down for a little bit until um, I can check into my Airbnb. And then we're going to look around that area. It's already, I spent almost 45 minutes here, which I was, I was expecting a shorter amount of time. But yeah, let's head over. We're gonna take the Guangzhou subway. How exciting. Let's go.
a couple important things. This is Democracy Plaza. And um, I'm gonna talk about it more a little bit later, but I'm here for like a day and a half basically. Guangzhou, if you don't know, is really famous for its uprising against the dictator in the 80s, dictators in the 80s. And um, this is where a huge event took place. And there are still a lot of people who deny that it happens, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that more, but it's just kind of crazy that this is just like a part of town. And it, there was like millions of, well not millions, but like hundreds of thousands of people filling this place up to demonstrate. It's crazy. Also another thing, I don't know if maybe this subway station is just confusing or what, but if you are nervous about looking lost in Korea, don't be because everyone is lost. And literally everyone was like so confused about what exit they wanted when I was getting off the subway. Like everyone was pulling U-turns and stuff like that. So yeah, just if you ever feel self-conscious about walking around and looking lost literally everyone else is lost too and they will not notice um and another thing there was an old man on the um escalator he was going down and to everyone going up he was like be happy hello students be happy <laughs> so it was just i i love Bangju already i'm loving it so yeah we're gonna hit a cafe really quick to cool down it's actually quite warm and um, I'm gonna check into our Airbnb and see some more, okay? There was a man on the other side of this huge walkway that wanted to take a picture and I didn't notice until I was done like walking up and down, ruining his shot, so. Sorry, my dude, I'm out of your way now, goodbye. anything else um and now i'm gonna go put my heavy backpack down switch bags and um get out and explore a little bit more this area is so cute this is like the cutest macaroon shop too oh my god great <laughs> my little airbnb Cute. It's a little out of the way. This is near the wrong Gwangju station, unfortunately. Um, but it's got all that I need and the lady was super nice. So here's home. Okay, catch you later. So I laid down to take a quick nap. And I don't know if you can read my lamp. <laughs> but I'm going to be thinking about that as I sleep. So catch ya in maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> Out again. <laughs> okay, so here is the plan. Um, we are going to head over to Dayin Market, see what is over there, and then we're going to an area called Chungcheongno, I think, which is just supposed to be a cool little downtown area. There's some more information like about the May 18th, like Gwangju Uprising stuff. And I didn't expect this street to be this noisy, so I'm going to stop talking, but I will see you at Day and Market. And hopefully we will find some food, learn some things, do all that fun stuff, you know? So, <laughs> let's go!
the market was a little quiet and it was definitely more of just like a where you do your grocery shopping kind of market. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of like street food or anything like that. So went through there. Now I'm walking down alleged art street. I did not plan to, it's just kind of on the way and I don't really understand what it is. It's just got a pretty cobblestone path. I mean, anyway, we're walking to hopefully some kind of like exhibit about the Guangzhou uprising, which will be cool to see. I don't want to like super repeat myself because I feel like if you watch this channel, you've heard this speech like a hundred times, but um, I will put a link to a video I made about um, Korean films based on historical events and most of them had to do with Gwangju. So um, if you want to check that out, you can learn you can learn a lot about the uprising and the prejudice that continues um, against people from Gwangju, from Jeolla. And it's like, even though it happened so long ago, it is still a hot topic. So yeah, I would check that out instead of having me repeat it again. Um, but I just saw something cool, so I want to take a video of it. So I'm going to stop now and I will see you at the thingy. Okay? Okay. sad but there was literally one part downstairs where I don't know how they did it but like the glass was it looked like a solid wall and then the second you got close to it it disappeared and it just showed like a truck full of dead bodies um this is really well put together like that was really shocking but it like kind of hit home everything this is amazing this is it's like three stories of everything is translated in English. Um, it's, it's broken down into so much detail, but it's also like broad enough that if you don't have a lot of time, you can learn so much. This is amazing and it's free and it's right in the downtown area. I don't know why this didn't come up when I was researched. I literally found it like randomly looking on the map of the place, like I was gonna go to a cafe here. And I found this, um, definitely I'll, I'll obviously link where it is down below but um if you're in Guangzhou this is incredible um and powerful so just be emotionally prepared for it but it's um it's worth a stop for sure if you read um the book by Han Gang, Human Acts you would recognize this scene. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend you do. So we're gonna try and lift our spirits from that incredible museum, um, but incredibly sad. Um, we're gonna go get dinner and I'm gonna get some momil, some noodles, some cold noodles, cause I'm hot for some reason. This place has apparently been around for 60 years, so it's probably kind of good. So let's go.
Okay, I forgot how awkward it was to be like stared at because not only are there like significantly less foreigners in Gwangju than there are in Seoul, but especially right now with nobody traveling, um, I'm really sticking out. Um, and so it's a little hard for me to vlog because everyone is <laughs> just like, it, just looking, like they're not being mean, they're just kind of like glancing and it freaks me out. Oh, I was thinking of going here. Cool little restaurant. But it was a meat place. So anyway, um, yeah, this is pretty much just like any, it's, it's more like a Hongdae than Myeongdong, I would say. Um, ooh, should I get Kurt that Nirvana shirt? Hold on a sec. But that place that I stopped in was really cute and it was kind of a mix of antiques, handmade stuff from other parts of the world, and then stuff by this small label called Nun. Um, and the guy who worked there was super nice. We were able to like have a conversation. He's been to LA. He didn't know where San Diego was. That's okay. Um, everyone that I've spoken to has just been so open and kind and that's kind of like the Jolla way. Everybody here is really chill. So um, anyway, now we're going to go to a cafe. I'm going to get a nice little dessert. Even though I had that Yang Gang, it doesn't count. It's a whole new meal. Um, so hopefully I think there's a rooftop, allegedly. So that's what we're going to do. Alrighty, let's go get me some ice cream. Are getting an early start tomorrow. I am actually leaving Guangzhou and going to Bosong. That will be a separate video. I have wanted to go to the green tea fields in Bosong since I heard about them <laughs> maybe six or seven years ago. So I'm very excited. Um, so this trip to Guangzhou is going to be like a day and a half, sort of. Um, so yeah, this was a very successful day. Guangzhou is just super chill. This area Honestly, like as far as clothing stores go, if you're into shopping, I would say that this is better than Hongdae, better than any, like it's so concentrated. I think their Seoul has a lot of stores like this, but not all right here. There's so many cool boutiques. This was just really fun. So I'm gonna actually walk home and um, get some rest. Cause like I said, we have to wake up really early and I'm very excited. So see you then. Thanks for coming along day one, Guangzhou. back in Gwangju. So I just had the busiest two days, which are going to be a separate vlog. Change of plans, I guess. So originally I was going to be in Gwangju for like part, like half of a day and then going to Bosong. And then this morning I went to Damyang and then I was just going to have a couple hours left in Gwangju to like see the last little bits that I wanted to see. But because it's a long weekend, Kurt actually decided, you know what, why don't I just take the train down. So he's actually meeting me in an hour. Um, and so we might see some other interesting things. We're gonna stay here for the whole weekend. Um, we might see some interesting things and I might film it, but um, typically I don't like to film when I'm like hanging out with Kurt or my friends or my family, just because I actually said this in a comment recently, cause somebody asked like, when I'm vlogging, I feel like I'm on a video call with you guys. And to me, it's kind of rude. It's like picking up the phone at the dinner table, you know? Um, even though I don't feel that way when I'm with my friends and they're vlogging, when I'm doing it, I feel rude, um, like taking away from being with the person that I'm actually with. So um, I might do some discreet vlogging with Kurt if we see something really cool, but um, 
this video is basically just like if you have a three-day weekend and you want to come to Guangzhou and see Bosong and Damyang as well this is how much of Guangzhou you can see and I am going to the May 18th Memorial Park however right next to this bus stop is like the prettiest little rose garden so I'm gonna look at this and then we're gonna go there and then we're gonna go pick up Kurt hopefully he's hungry because I'm hungry <laughs> and yeah, let's look around we're here right at golden hour so it should be lovely i can't smell with my mask on but the roses are nice so yeah let's go but if you want to come dog watch there are so many dogs like i'm overwhelmed there are so many dogs um this is a really beautiful park so happy i came through So um, I am back from Guangzhou and I didn't get a chance to kind of sign off, but basically Kurt arrived and we walked around and he was, like I was, stunned by just how fashionable and cool everybody was. Um, I didn't know this, but Guangzhou has a lot of independent clothing factories. There were so many little boutiques and honestly, there were so many men's clothes and Kurt really noticed that, that like, the guys were really dressed up, um, like taking all these fashion risks, like just a super trendy city. Everybody had like their own aesthetic and they were pulling it off perfectly. It was great. Um, so if you are interested in shopping, um, I honestly think that that area, Chungjang, is better than any other area in Seoul, especially for shop like getting the newest trendiest clothes um so yeah that was just really cool and um like i said guangzhou is just such a laid-back place like jolado the province in and of itself now it's north and south province but it's just known for being a chill place and so kurt was cracking up because when i picked him up at the train station we took a taxi to my airbnb to get my stuff and the taxi driver forgot to put on the meter and Kurt told him, and he clearly wasn't trying to rip us off. He was literally just like, oh, damn, I always forget. Like he was just so chill. Um, and then the next day we took the bus to Damyang and the bus driver was so chatty, like talking to all the old women in the front, you know, being a flirt. He missed the bus stop for a girl and she had to be like, oh, she, like, come on. Um, and he was like, oh, my bad, my bad. Like just really chill atmosphere. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we just had a great time. I didn't, I feel like I didn't do a lot of things, but the things that I did, I really enjoyed. And like, I took my time just sitting there kind of absorbing the atmosphere. So yeah, Guangzhou didn't let me down. It was everything that I hoped it would be and more. Um, really like, it's just got a really strong culture. It's got a really strong history. So 
Um, I highly recommend if you want to do like the shopping and cafes and stuff. Also definitely pair it with the like museums and mem memorials and stuff like that because it kind of gives you the full understanding of Gwangju and yeah I just overall had an absolutely fantastic time and I'm really glad that I chose to go down there and go to Bosong and Damyang from there because then those trips were only like an hour versus from Seoul it would be like three to four hours um but they were also super fun and I'm really excited for those vlogs vlog um and I loved one of the places so much that I dragged Kurt there the next day like I went two days in a row because I love the city so much so I really hope that you are looking forward to my next vlog um and yeah thank you so much for joining me can't believe it took me this long to get to Gwangju I'm so sorry to Gwangju I really am um but yeah just fantastic city can't say enough about it and I will leave you here okay thank you as always for joining me and I will see you in Bosong and Damyang bye